Well, hello, family. This is your pastor, and I am, as always, I'm excited to be able to share with you once again. And we have a, a great subject matter that we're discussing um, today relative to anger. Relative to anger. I had, uh, I won't call any names, of course, but I had one of my spiritual sons that... Um, I just told him this week, I said, man, you need anger management. Now, he, you know, he does what I tell him to do. He, he really gives me that respect. But when he gets angry about things, it's like I have to constantly talk him down off of the ledge. And we had um, a real candid conversation because he's a real son. You know, some people, they call themselves sons, but you, you really can't uh, talk straight with them. They don't give you that. They don't give you that kind of grace in their lives. But with this young man, he gives me that grace and he respects what I have to say to him. And uh, it, was, it was somewhat funny, but it wasn't funny. I said, boy, you need anger management. And I thought about how um, the spirit of anger is not only a problem with him, but it's a problem with so many. You know, even in, in the United States of America today, we see how many angry people. I mean, people are just filled with with anger and bitterness and uh, what seems like hatred. It's um, it's 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 phenomenal to watch and not in not phenomenal in a good sense. It's it's um, it's it's like nothing I've ever uh, witnessed or I've never seen anything like this, you know, um, People are just angry, even in the body of Christ, in the church. People are angry, you know, angry for God knows what. You know, when we when we are when we were assembled every week, somebody's angry about something, something the ushers did, something the pastor did, something the deacons did. Yeah, just just angry. People are angry. And the Bible talks. Um, the Bible gives us some very specific wisdom about the spirit of anger. And I want to kind of share some of this with you today because this is a much larger discussion that could just go on. This could be a, a series that would go on for months, literally, if we just dealt with anger. But if you look in Ecclesiastes 7 and 9, it says, Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry, for anger resteth in the bosom of fools. Now, there's a lot of wisdom. There's a lot of wisdom in that text. He says, be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry and angry. Now, what does that mean? That means you will have more than likely more than a few occasions to get angry. And when certain things happen, you will have the impulse to react emotionally and get angry and become destructive and even self-destructive. Or you can come back to the wisdom of this text and recall that anger resteth in the bosom of fools. In other words, anger is never supposed to rest in you. Anger is not supposed to find a home in your heart. Anger is something that should pass through, you know. Now, is it is it human? Is it natural? We all get angry. We all get angry. Even Jesus got angry. He got righteously indignant when he went into the temple and he saw that these people were selling the, the, the worst animals for sacrifice. And he started turning over their tables and everything. Uh, but there's a difference between righteous indignation or righteous anger that that is uh, on the accord of what is suitable and right in the eyes of God and what dishonors God versus this emotional anger that um, is driven by I want to get somebody big difference. Anger is something we feel, but <laughs> We must not become. Anger is something we feel but must not become. In other words, I can feel anger, but I must never become anger. 
Anger is never supposed to be cemented to my heart or to my spirit. Now, number one, which leads me to number one. If you do not, if you do not get a handle on your anger, anger will misrepresent your character. Have you ever noticed how you behave when you get angry? Is it anything like who you really are? No, it's not. There are so many people that have been judged, categorized and defined by a moment of anger. And that anger is not a true representation of who they are. Some of the most docile, humble and um, peaceful people in the world, when they get angry, they seem like raging bulls. And if a person only knew them from that perspective, they would never get to know the real individual because anger will cause you to misrepresent your character. And I pause right there intentionally because I want you to think about it, because there are some of you that are watching me now who are who have no control of your anger. You have no management of your anger and your anger has ruined more than a few of your potentially great relationships. Because it misrepresented your character. How are you a Christian? You know, that's what the world says. How are you a Christian? And you going around cussing and turning, you know, uh, throwing blows at people and all of that. Christians are human, too. But the world is not going to come to that conclusion. The world is going to say you're a hypocrite because your anger, what misrepresented you. Now, in Ephesians four and twenty six, it says, be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. In other words, your anger has to have parameters within which you will allow it. He says, be angry, but don't allow it to cross the line that it becomes sin, something that brings dishonor to God or something that brings dishonor to you or something that is harmful to others. He says, feel it but let it pass through. Don't let it rest in you. He says, be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Don't hold on to this anger. Let it go. I was sitting with my mother-in-law for her, my mother in love. That's what we say in our family. Sitting with my mother in love for her uh, birthday, Lisa and I brought, uh, she and my father-in-law out uh, for their birthday celebration. Their birthdays are not far apart. And she was teaching me Patois. That's, uh, I guess you would say Jamaican slang, I guess you would say. And uh, she was teaching me another phrase to use. You know, I try to get some phrases that I can use on Lisa around here. Uh, and, and the phrase she taught me is, let go that. Let go that. Let go that. You know, in other words, let it go. You know, so, so when Lisa go talking and fussing about, let go that. Let go that. Well, that's the spirit you have to have with anger. Let go that. Let go that. Don't don't hold on to that, man. No bother me today. No bother me today. Let that go. Let go that. You can't hold on to this stuff. You can't hold everything against everybody. I know. I know they did you wrong. But the anger that is in you is misrepresenting you and not them. Number two, anger will poison your influence. And when I say poison your influence, of course, I mean when people discover that you're angry, you'll have less influence. Your influence won't be as great, if at all. But it also poisons your influence in that there are people who follow your example and will begin to... Um, Feed on your anger. You will have people that follow you who will become angry with the people you're angry with. And those persons have done them nothing. So now you're just like a virus. 
You're just you're just like a virus. You're you're going around and you are infecting others with your those that you influence. You're infecting them with your bitterness. The people that love me, can you imagine if I got on here and I spewed out a lot of anger? People, you know, sometimes say, well, why don't you have something to say about this? And why don't you have something to say about that? It's because I understand my influence. It's not that I don't feel certain kinds of ways, but if I if I take and communicate certain things and the way I feel about those things, there are people that will take those little bits, those sound bites, and they will expand it into something that may derail their lives for the duration. I can say, because I have influence, I can say a certain thing about something and 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 I can plant a spirit of bitterness in people that will become hatred. So I, I choose to what protect my influence because there are people who uh, will be the casualties of my misappropriation of my emotion. Anger will poison your your influence will become poisonous. In Hebrews 12, 14 and 15, it says, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord looking diligently. Lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness, watch this, any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, watch this, and thereby many be defiled. What is a root of bitterness in me can defile a multitude. So I have to make certain that what? My heart is clear. Because I have influence over others as a mother, you cannot have all of this hatred, demonstrative hatred for your children's father and pouring all of that hatred into your kids. And then listen to what Proverbs 22, 24 and 25 says. Make no friendship with an angry man. And with a furious man, thou shalt not go, lest thou learn his ways and get a snare to thy soul. In other words, another man's anger becomes other people's issues. One man with a certain level of influence can take his anger and poison the hearts and ruin the lives of a multitude. So he says, the wisdom is don't even make friendship with angry people. When you see that a person is angry and they just walking in anger all the time, it's best to just love them and leave them. Love them and leave them. That's what I used to do. Y'all know the song. Love them and leave them, man. You, 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 you can't you can't take that stuff into your heart, into your life, because their influence will become poisonous in your life. And then number three. And finally, anger will turn you into a victimizer. You can hold on to anger so much. You can hold on to that anger and keep that thing, that seed of anger buried in your heart. But the thing about keeping seed is that you bury seed, it reproduces. Oh, that's good right there. You can take a seed, you know, you can take the seeds from an apple tree and say, OK, I hate apples. So I'm going to do the, I'm, I'm burying this seed. And before you know it, the seed of the apple tree that you buried is now growing into an apple tree. In fact, you create an orchard from the seeds of one apple. Even though you hate apples and you buried the seed in the soil, now the seed is reproducing. Well, so is anger. If you hold on to anger in your heart, your heart is reproductive. It's like soil. You look around and you'll be reproducing the very thing that you hated in the beginning because you did not dispose of it. You did not dig it up. 
You planted that thing, but now you got to dig that thing up before that thing germinates. Because anger will turn you into a victimizer. You, 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 maybe you won't do the exact same thing that someone else did to you, but your, your attitude will be a get even spirit. Listen to what Proverbs 29 and 22 says, an angry man stirreth up strife and the furious man aboundeth in transgressions. When you become angry, you simultaneously become messy and you become contentious and you develop that spirit where, you know, you snatching people up and you snapping at people because of what somebody did you 30 years ago. And you never processed it, processed it. And now you're a victimizer. You angry with your daddy, but you're abusing your wife. I'm preaching better than y'all shouting. You angry with your former pastor, but you over here abusing me. And I'm trying to do nothing but be a good pastor to you. It's because unresolved anger turns you into a victimizer. You Got to dig this stuff up, man. Got to dig this stuff up. Listen to this illustration. Um, Carrie Schmidt. Listen, listen to this. There's two men driving in Southern California got into a battle of road rage. After one cut the other off in a parking lot. The hot headed men sped out of the parking lot in a fit of anger, chasing, driving, recklessly dodging and weaving in and out of traffic. They endangered a lot of lives before one finally forced the other to careen out of control. The driver frantically tried to regain control, but in the process, an innocent little girl on a nearby sidewalk was killed. A young life was taken simply because two men became needlessly angry at each other. When you when you hold on to a spirit of anger, you unintentionally destroy the lives of other people. Now, what's the what's the what's the answer? What's the answer? Well, you, you have to learn how to use the Jesus example on Calvary while they were crucifying him. The Bible says that Jesus looked to his father and said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. He forgave them. Forgiveness was a choice. It wasn't a feeling. He forgave them, watch this, while they were in the act of abusing him. He forgave them. He forgave them even though they were not asking, they were not repentant, they were not asking for forgiveness. He forgave them because he understood that forgiving them was not about them, it was about him. And if you want to be a person that overcomes anger, you have to forgive. You have to utilize the closure of forgiveness. You got to stop waiting on somebody one day coming in and apologizing and until then I'm going to hold it in my heart. I feel like I have a right to it. You don't have a right to kill yourself. You don't have a right to ruin your physiology. You don't have a right to ruin your emotional life and the, those that are connected to you because of somebody that did you wrong. And no, 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 you got a right to be happy. You have a right to be free. You have a right to move on. And the only way to do that is to forgive and to let it go and, and to stop being offended. Stop taking everything so personally. Begin to discern people's levels. Well, a person cannot behave beyond their level. And when you understand the level of a person, their behavior no longer surprises you. Miles Monroe said, when you know the nature of a beast, its behavior don't, no longer surprises you. If you know that I'm limited, when I behave on a limited level, it should no longer surprise you. And so I pray for you today that the Spirit of God will just completely deliver you from the spirit of anger. And that you will be free from it in Jesus' name. That's my prayer for you, sincerely.